Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian. It has been a little bit since we've done some Four Roses specific content, and I figured we'd bust it back out today. I was supposed to do this video as soon as this bottle released, and I didn't get around to it, so I'm sorry, but we are looking at it now. And this happens to be the latest in the hyper aged bottles that Four Roses is putting out. And they put this one out around Christmas time. This was the Happy Holidays bottle they released in December, an 18 and a half year OESK. If you have seen the other videos on my channel, or if you haven't, I'll link them up above. We took a look at the Visitor Center 20 year last year. We took a look at an old OBSF, and then we took a, a look at an older OESV, both of those going to either tornado relief or flood relief efforts in Kentucky. This one is not associated with one of those, but it is one of the older releases that we saw coming out of the gift shop towards the end of last year. What was amazing about this bottle specifically, uh, a lot of people were speculating when, when we caught wind that this was going to be releasing at the gift shop, uh, what the price of this was going to be in light of some of the other products they had put out. And much to our surprise, this bottle released at the gift shop after tax, $90. So when you talk about the $10 per year rule, and you see something that's almost 19 years old at $90, you better believe this is a fantastic value bourbon, but is it good on the palate? Let's take a look at it now. The barrel today that we are tasting is barrel I. So this is coming in at 60.7%. Warehouse RS, barrel number 383I. And I've heard a lot of feedback from folks saying that these are all really enjoyable barrels, this particular release, and a lot of speculation going on about whether this is better than the 16 and a half year that we tried, the 20 year that we tried, where it releases. I'm gonna say, while this is opening up, I could get used to Four Roses releasing some of these hyper older aged whiskeys. But before we get any further and while this is opening up, jump down below. Let me know if you all have tried Four Roses, what your favorite recipe has been. If you haven't tried Four Roses, what recipe of Four Roses are you most looking forward to trying? And while you're at it, when you're down below, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Help me continue to grow the channel here in 2023. Now that this pour is opened up, let's go ahead and take a look at it. You can kind of see the legs there moving on the glass. Very unassuming in color here. It's not overly dark like we might expect from a really old whiskey, but it is a deeper golden hue there. Let's go ahead and get on the nose. You'd never guess the age of this whiskey based on the nose here. The OESK recipe is known for being spicy, full-bodied. The nose honestly is a little unassuming for, for maybe what I am anticipating. Nothing about it screams that it's 18 and a half years old at all. You get this very forward cedar note that's in there. Kind of damp, kind of, kind of woodsy, aromatic, but not too funky, not too woody. It moves into some apricot, some slightly vanilla raspberry notes, traditional of what we've seen in other Four Roses products. And then not overly banana like some distilleries can be, but it has this kind of freshly baked banana nut bread note kind of continuing on. Uh, and it's really kind of dense. It's kind of not exactly sweet, not exactly banana-y, but uh, you, you probably know that kind of freshly baked banana bread pulling straight out from the oven. And that kind of lingers on this nose a little bit of brown sugar in there as well. But again, nothing on the nose is overly pressing. It's not overly full. If anything, the more it sits, maybe the more that it grows, it has a little bit of toffee with a touch savory element as well. Let's go ahead and dive into the palate and see what we got here. Man, that is erupting with flavor on the palate which is such a change from the nose. Rich, velvety coating mouthfeel. The K spice is perfect here. Yes, it's spicy, but it's balanced, it's well done. It's not necessarily dry cinnamon or 
baking spice or um, heavy pepper or anything like that. You just feel a, a, a balanced spiciness cut through, but that's not the dominant flavor. What's more dominant than anything are these musty, oaky notes, and it's not overly aged. There's a, a decadent, slightly sweet element to these musty, funky, heavy oak notes, these tobacco notes there. But more on the nose, the more you taste it as well, you do have this slightly sweet savoriness like a like a maple bacon. Nice pops of like a, a spiced orange chai-like element. There's this kind of light, it's not quite floral, but there is this slight tea, black tea-like tan into it mixed with an orange spice. It's not quite marmalade. It's not fresh citrus necessarily, but there's definitely some orange zest there. Ooh, what a wonderful pour. This is actually, a, I'll talk about this real quick. This is a very interesting change from the barrel I tried at the tasting. I had mentioned to a lot of my friends, barrel M is the one that we tried at the tasting. And to me, it was overly sweet. I mean, it was like a Four Roses mixed with a American light whiskey type sweet, very cake-like, very heavily exaggerated birthday cake type sweetness. And it made me nervous. And that's why in the, the year end review, based off of that one taste, this is not a barrel that I could put forward as one of my favorite whiskeys of the year. I defaulted back to that 16 and a half year OESV that was also very good, a very good representation of OESV as well with the old age. But this here, ma'am, this is a delightful pour, a delightful pour. What I want to do real quick is compare this to a younger OESK. This is from a run you've probably seen me talk about, but you've definitely heard me talk about it if you've followed me on Instagram or, or had any conversation with me. This is from the QN51 run that we've seen uh, semi-recently last year. This is the Mellow Moments pick that came out. So this is 10 year, one month. Uh, and the reason I got this is because they're both at 60.7 north side of the Q warehouse. We're talking about separate warehouses here. But again, similar proofs here, about same color, if not a little bit darker on this one. Oh man, even right away on the nose, it, it in comparison is a lot more youthful, a little bit more lively, still has kind of vanilla forwardness, a little bit of that orange spice there kind of a fresh breadiness as well. Let's go ahead and dive in on the taste. All this nice, rich coating, but it comes off like the more traditional baking spices as we historically talk about in other pours. This is not bad. This is still really good. Great amount of spice, very rich, viscous body, typical kind of caramel vanilla pocket around red fruits like we notice in, in Four Roses specifically in the E, the lower rise delicious, but there's just something about how ramped up the oakiness is that not only makes it taste older, it makes it taste uh, elegant, super complex, really just balances out the spice in there and tones away some of the grain. Again, for something that was so unassumedly old on the nose, it is perfectly balanced in the glass. It's continuing to get sweeter, more cakey, more spongy on the nose. And I'll be curious to see how that continues to come out also on the palate. The best way of summing this up though, is this is an excellent older expression coming out of Four Roses. Thanks everybody for tuning in. If you wanna hear more Four Roses or any specific Four Roses talks, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're interested in hearing. Check out the seventh tier playlist that I have here of other reviews of other Four Roses bottles, things that I've talked about there as well. Maybe you'll find some of that stuff informational. Thanks as always for tuning into the channel guys. Until next time, see you all later.